This hurdle won in great style by Draconian, an exciting finish. Pat Keane, the sports editor of the Herald, Niall Cronin, racing correspondent, Alan Steenson, the editor, making the presentation to Clipper Logistics, and well done to all of them. Now, Punchestown has uh, undergone uh, quite a development since we were last year. Over six million euros spent on it. And uh, yesterday, Tracy had a, a nose around and uh, saw plenty. Yes, Tracy. There's been a lot of changes here at Punchestown since we were here last year. So let's go and take a sneak peek ahead of the action this week. Just caught up with Shona Draper and we are standing in front of the brand new stand and it looks absolutely fantastic and huge. And what, What's inside it? Thank you very much. So this is our new Hunt stand unveiled for this festival. We're very excited about it because it's going to raise our game. We have 125,000 people coming to the festival, which is amazing. And with that comes a lot of demand for hospitality, accommodation. It's worth about 60 million to the local economy. I'm here in the shopping village. And everybody's getting set up for the week ahead. I've an awful lot of work to do. But this man, Alan Redmond, he has been displaying art here for 25 years this year. And he's up the ladder. Alan, hi, how are you? <laughs> Good morning. As always, you've got some fantastic pieces. And uh, are you expecting a big week? Well, we are, yeah. We, this is a new innovation this week. We're going to be in a tented village. And it really is. It's going to protect us from the elements. That's one thing that's always bothered us, you know, especially paintings going around and that. No, this looks like it's, it's going to be a super idea. This huge bar behind me is another one of the new additions. Now, it might be empty now, but I can tell you, you'll be packed like sardines in here over the next few days. Well, inside this door is a brand spanking new Corinthian restaurant, and hopefully Mike's inside. Mike, how are you? Oh, my goodness. Me, the how place. Are how are you? Very welcome, it's very welcome. Suddenly, it's gorgeous. Oh, it's an amazing space. It's an amazing space. But, what, a, uh, what an addition. And, and just... I mean, what about that? You're, you're talking last year, what, 122,000 attendees. Um, corporate, you're looking at probably about 17,000 sit-down corporate meals. I would love to spend the week sitting at one of those tables drinking I'd champagne. Love unfortunately, be, I would love to be to. sitting beside you and drinking <laughs> champagne, but unfortunately, I won't be doing that either. I'll be doing the miles around the place. One day, you know. Yeah, one day, you know. Okay. So that was a whistle-stop tour of behind the scenes at Punchestown here. But as you can see behind me, the work continues on. It's going to be a fantastic week. I'm joined by Norman Need here, trainer Joey Sasa. You gave him a little prep on the All Weather a few weeks ago. Are you looking forward to today? Yeah, uh, it, everything went very well in the dock. He went around and did it very nicely. There is one little chink in the armour now, though, it's not rain because he's, he is a good ground horse. And I don't know how much has gone into it, but every drop is going to be a disadvantage to him. Yeah, but he has very good form behind Keyless Emery and Horse of Rad and Graded races. He must think he's off a well winnable mark. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I, I was. Uh, I think he's 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 had a bit of, of uh, uh, racing in handicaps now, and he's you know he's a he's a hardened handicapper. Yeah, we we'll be hopeful. But for the rest of the week, you obviously have a road to respect tomorrow. It's in good all order. Yeah, I couldn't be happier with him, Ruby. Everything's gone right since uh, Cheltenham. Haven't had any hiccups at all, you know. So, well, when we left home, he was all right anyway. So hopefully he'll turn up tomorrow. Okay. Sorry about that. Cheers, the best of luck. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. Leon stands by. Yes, horses on parade for... Our big handicap hurdle on day one, the Kill is She and handicap hurdle. Leon Blanche and uh, Tom Lee, there's number 21 in your picture. There's a Venar de Mont of uh, Jack Kennedy. Absentee is number 16, Houses of Parliament. 24 runners going to the post. Six of them trained by Willie Mullins. Five by Gordon Elliott. It's a 60,000 euro uh, uh, contest. And as I say, 11 of the 24 trained by Mullins and Elliott. As you can see, huge, huge prize money. Won last year by the 14 to 1 shot Westerner Boy, who is back to defend his crown. He's number 10 in your paper. But number one is the footsteps in the sand mare for Willie Mullins and David Mullins. Lagos to Vegas. Two, Tigris River, Luke Dempsey, with the tongue strap. Three, Ivanovich Gorbatov is Mark Enright. Four is Bunkoff Early. That's the mount of Robbie Power. Five, Joey Sasa, Sean Flanagan. Number six, Morgan, Jack Kennedy. Will write for Gordon Elliott. Seven for the Killy She is Carrick Cottle, Kevin Sexton. Six, high school days, Dylan Robinson takes the five offs. Nine is Grant Partner, Brian Cooper, writing for Tom Mullins. Ten, Western Boy, Jody McGarvey. Eleven, Duke of the Thay, tongue strap. Noel Feely, of course, who just joined us. 25 to 1, Steve Draconian to win the first of the grade ones. Twelve, Ben Dundee is Davy Russell. Where's the tongue strap? Number 13 is Articulum for Andrew Lynch and Terence O'Brien. 
40, Nessim Dorma, love the name, Paul Townan. Five is your giant uh, favourite, Bally O'Sheen. Well handicapped and compared to his uh, fence riding, Barry Gerrard, he rides. 16 is your non-runner, 17, Low Sun, chic pieces, young Katie O'Farrell. Claims a seven, of course. Good winner at Fairy House last week. 18, Golden Spear, tongue strap, well fancied. Liam Quinlan, very good value for his seven pounds diameter. 19, Distonk, well fancied for Jonathan Moore. 20, Light Dak, Donna Myler. 21, Venar, Dennis O'Regan. 22, 10 10, Mark Walsh. 23, Icaria is Andrew Ring claiming the three pounds. 24, through self, Rachel Blackmore. Uh, put up by Ruby this morning in the Irish Examiner column and 25 Pietra Longa tongue star uh, Danny Mullins the amount of uh, Willie Mullins Tom Lee Bally O'Sheen 8-1 to one favour along with 10-10 Vegas to Vegas 9-1 to one. yeah well if you actually factor in Andrew Bolger's comments about Bally O'Sheen this morning just saying we're just looking forward to getting a run into him the market disagrees he was very well backed in the offices this morning there were rumbles for him on the exchanges last night Willie Mullins runs 6 Interestingly, the top weight, the mare, Lagos to Vegas, he hasn't had her that long. She's got loads of quality, a little bit of money each way around for her. And also the mount of Katie O'Farrell, big day for her last week, that double she rode at Fairy House. She's on number 17, Low Sun, which is just appearing above us here on the race course. Gloriously so, uh, Low Sun is 10 to 1 from 12 to 1 earlier on today. And joining me is Leon Blanche from uh, Boyle Sports. Of course, your big race is... Uh, really race to savor. Yeah, I think it is, Brian. It's great to see Duvan take on Undersoul, take on Min. Um, you've got a champion chase winner in there, Special Tiara, 20 to 1 shot, but the market has spoke for Duvan. Special Tiara is now an absentee. The, sorry, so the, all the money has come for Duvan, Brian. Um, we went 11 to 8 this morning. He's now a shade of odds on. And I suppose he was jumping very well at Cheltenham. It was a long way from home when he fell under Patrick Mullins. But all the vibes were right about him that day as well. I think he's going to take an awful lot of beating. And there's a reason why Willie's putting them all in, because there's €275,000 worth of program. Uh, well, listen, I know you never like to hear a bumper horse being backed, but Robert Tyner has won the Goffs bumper for the last two years. He's bidding for three in a row, and design matters. He was massive prices last night. He's now into seven or eight to one from as big as 50 and 66 to one. So he's the one they want. And Mona Lee is quite solid. However, invitation only is the each way play in the novice chase at 20 to seven. Thank you very much, Leon. It promises as much as Tom said. The rain has stopped. The sun is out. The horse that won the first race was called. Just wait and see. Time will tell. Fifteen. The first we get a look at is is uh, Baliashin up from Limerick and the Bulger stable. The son of presenting. He's uh, about a steeplechase. You'd have to say he's uh, been running over fences of late. He ran a cork back in October and was a good winner when beating Doctor Phoenix. That's pretty interesting with Doctor Phoenix running later. Twenty-two is ten. Ten. Mark Walsh, uh, one of a few that JP has in the race. This one trained by Philip Dempsey. Uh, this fella beat this doc. Uh, the last time up at Down Royal. He's likely race. He's only had a few runs. Experience would be the big factor here. Plenty good enough, but lacks experience. Lagos one to Vegas. Lagos to Vegas. Uh, my one honour in Listowel and Killarney. Strong travelling, good jumping mare. Uh, doesn't find a whole lot off the bridle, so David will be have to be delivering her. Uh, you know, upsize at the last, not be in front too long on her. She doesn't do a whole pile in front, uh, but she's in really good form. Number five it's is Joey Salsa. This fella has a big shout. He won at Dundalk the last time up on the flat. Uh, Noel said earlier on that he would prefer if the rain stayed away. He likes good ground. He's got a good couple. Of, he was a good novice last year. Won a nice race at Nace. Uh, he's a pretty smart horse, I think, with a big shout, this fella. That's number five, Joey Salsa. Western boy, you can give a squeak to as well. Uh, JP has half a dozen in the race. Jody McGarvey rides this fella. He's a son of Antonius Pius, and he was last, as, uh, last year's winner. Runs well fresh. And uh, the ground was coming in his favour. He might prefer better ground than he's getting this afternoon. 19 is this dunk, Ruby. Yeah, this dunk and all me is obviously was behind um, Philip Dempsey's horse 10 10 the last day. Um, he's in good old form before that. He beat Ante of Willies in, in Navin in a maiden hurdle. He's probably on an attractive enough mark. Um, and Jonathan Moore rides. Ruby, a very different race to the, the previous race. This is a handicap, 24 runners. How do you win it? 
Uh, it depends, Robert. I mean, this Punchestown is notoriously a track where you need to be on the pace over hurdles. Um, you know, it's quite flat and quite level, and it's hard to get into a race. That said, if you get a race like our first race, where they go too fast up front, you need to be at the back. So you'll have to. Have, the guys will have to have done their homework, figure out how much pace in the race. Are they likely to go too quick, or will they go an even gallop and have to make their decisions then? Could Paul have done anything different on no. Gilbert? Because he, I mean, he was pulling from the moment they jumped off. He was free, wasn't he? No, there was nothing Paul Townend could have done. Um, he jumped out and was going a good gallop. It was just those that took him on. Sean Flanagan and Brian Cooper, they kept forcing the pace. Um, you know, and even someone like David Russell, with his experience, was sat right behind him. But look, hindsight's an easy thing, but it looks to be going too hard to us. And that was borne out in the results with, with, with Draconian coming from the back. What do you think, Dad? Yeah, I think there was just a, a Noel Feely took his time, the lads in front took one another on, and like Gitterboard would have had to be like, like if Gitterboard was the real deal, if he was a top class Fahim or one of them, he would have won, but he's uh, not. Very few of them. Though. Very few of them, yeah. Very Ruby, few of them. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the horses in a minute, but I, something I want to ask you about, we saw a, a steeplechase at Cheltenham abandoned uh, recently because of the heat. In France, just correct me if I'm wrong, but do they, they encourage the horses to jog at the end of a race to get the heart rates back? Yeah, and we I, don't do that over here? No, I don't think we're doing it right here. Um, or in England, where they get it a bit warmer than us. Um, you know, when you go by the winning post in France, um, you have to tr- keep trotting. You trot. And it's just a known thing, or you're told no, on you're warm told days? No, you're told with the on the day and really warm days to trot. And it could be up to five minutes you have to trot for. Mm. But that's to allow the horse to blow off, allow the horse's heart rate to come down, and allow the horse to stop sweating. And to me, it baffles me to watch them when the horses go by the line here and they stop and they start throwing buckets of water on them. They're putting water onto a red-hot horse, so the water starts to heat on the horse's back. Um, it's not actually cooling them down. I, I, I don't know. Look, I'm not a vet, uh, but I struggle to see the merit in what we're doing here. It's something that we've got to look into. Yeah, well, hot, well, water should only put on a horse if you scrape it off. There's no way it should be left right on it. They've gone over the top here, and they have it absolutely arseless. Well, let's go back to that one. But uh, right now, these 24 runners are inspecting the flight of hurdles there, and they'll be making their way down to the start. And we have eight to one the field, I believe, Ballyoshin at the top of the market. But, boy, is it hard to pick the winner. Salian. Yeah, as Brian, as as Brian and Tom were saying, the rain has eased off and it is much nicer down here out on the track at the moment. See the last of them, Sean Flanagan, just getting his girth checked. With 24 runners in this race, there are quite a few of them, so they've all been and checked out the practice fence, and they're all now gathering. Paddy Graffin just telling them that there's one minute, and he'll try and get them in nice and collected and all in one group. But everything came down here fairly relaxed. There wasn't anything really to report down here, but you'll see they'll just circle once or twice few of them just getting a little bit head up but that's to be expected when you've this big a field Pat Keaton just trying to get them nice and organised with this side of, size of a field and then he'll head them up towards the starter Oh yes, big field for this killer she, Bally O'Sheen, just about favourite, eight to one. Ben Dundee is a ten to one shot, having been twelves. Low Sun ten to one. Ten ten is ten to one. This donk has a few quid each way for that at twelve to one along with true self. Uh, Tom, what have you been watching? Yeah, numbers twelve, thirteen, and seventeen looking to be the ones. Ben Dundee, course winner, definitely has a chance at trainer Gordon Elliott. Articulum uh, for a lesser known stable, but a talented one. Terence O'Brien, sixteen to one from twenty to one. And also we mentioned Low Sun. I'd just like to know before we go to Tony, Ruby, if you can hear us, who would you be on, given the choice? Um, I probably would love to have jumped on to Law's son, but Katie O'Farrell knocked a really good tune out of him at Ferry House last week, so I mightn't have been let. Um, but he could reproduce it, and he's one to keep an eye on when he goes back on the flat through the summer. And the market agrees. Let's go up to Tony to call him home for this 4.55, the Killashee House. Off and running, the uh, 24 runners as they make their way towards the uh, first flight, and Joey Sasa is on the inside up there too is uh, Low Sun and they're followed over by Tigris River Articulum is also prominent as is Ivanovich Gorbatov in the blue cap as they come up in front of the stands and Joey Sasa is on the inside of like that Low Sun is also disputing the lead Tigris River Articulum just behind these Ivanovich Gorbatov they're followed by 1010 and then comes Morgan around the outside is True Self Lagos to Vegas towards the inside ahead of Nessa and Dorma and they're being followed by Ben Dundee as they come up to the second and over it it's like that who shows just in front from Tigris River Joey Sasso on the inside red cap on the outside of Anvich Gorbatov and they're followed into this turn by Articulum then comes Low Sun then Ness and Dorma 10-10 is next and then Morgan and True Self and then comes uh, Lagos to Vegas followed by Ben Dundee as they clear the next flight of hurls and about to run downhill towards the back straight and the lead is being shared at this point by 
like that and the Blue Cap Tigris River Articulum is third then Ivanovic Gorbachev four Joey Sasa on the inside through self improves on the outside of Low Sun Morgan isn't far behind these with 10-10 and Dis Dunk Nessun Droma the orange colours towards the inside ahead of Lagos to Vegas and then Ben Dundee as they take this flight and it's like that who is the leader followed by Tigris River Ivanovic Gorbatov just behind these Articulum True Self on the outside the white cheek pieces of Low Sun blue and white on the inside is Joey Sasa in behind these is Morgan and then comes 10-10 Ness and Dorma as they race down the far side of the course and like that on the inside of Tigris River in third place is Articulum then Low Sun Ivanovic Gorbatov they're followed on the inside by Joey Sasa then Morgan Behind Morgan is True Self, and they're followed by Lagos to Vegas. As they race down now, past the halfway point, and on towards the next flight. Like that, on the inside of Tigris River. They're the leaders, followed by Articulum. On the right is Ivanovic Gorbatov. Joey Sasso, a mistake there. Then comes uh, Low Sun, and they're followed by True Self. In behind these is Distonk with 10-10. As they race on towards the last flight on the far side, and like that is the leader from Tigers River in second place and they're followed by Articulum then Lowson in behind them Grand Partner was a faller back in the field as they race into the turn taking them out of the back straight and on towards the next flight and one that's uh, in a spot of bother there in the middle bunk off early got hampered but it's like that the leader from Tigers River Articulum Joey Sasa Lowson Ivanovic Gorbatov True Self Morgan then towards the outside high school days makes it with the ground ahead of this Duncan 10-10 bunk off early is behind them as they come down towards this uh, next flight now and it's like that the leader with Tigris River Articulum's in third then Ivanovic Gorbatov Low Sun Morgan behind these Joey Sasson Ness and Dorma the orange colours on the inside True Self towards the outer as they clear that flight and it's like that the leader Tigris River alongside Articulum is next then Joey Sasa, then Low Sun True Self Ivanovic Gorbatov Ness and Dorma high school days around the outside 10-10 and Distonk getting into a two as they run the turn into the straight a long run to the final flight now and True Self has come there on the outside to take it up from Tigris River like that then Joey Sasse Ivanovic Gorbatov is behind them Western boys making ground but it's True Self and Rachel Blackmore with a lead of three or four lengths as they come to the final flight True Self from like that and Joey Sasse good jump by the leader and it's True Self the leader chased by like that in second as they race into the closing stages it's True Self and Rachel Blackmore it's going to be another for Willie Mullins and a scrap for second place with Joey Sasse getting that spot just ahead of like that Lozon stayed on well and then Morgan followed in by Tigris River and then came Articulum so it's uh, number 24 True Self trained by Willie Mullins ridden by Rachel Blackmore has landed the Kilishi handicap hurl race it was this handicap 24 of the minute two out but here we have the winner True Self Rachel Blackmore it's another for Willie she does it well she does she sat quite deep in the track and her all the way but it paid off because as they rounded up from the second last hurdle and things were getting tight Rachel got a great run round the outside and set sail and true self she's cricking up really well down to the last race she's just sticking her left hand keeps the revs up and her goes to the last jumps it really well but Joey Sasse who eventually finishes second was caught in a pocket behind the pace as was Low Sun who finishes fourth and the winner has flown down the outside and was gone she may have been the best horse today, but she got the smoothest passage through the rest. Yeah, Joey Salsa's on a cracker. He travelled superly all the way, just didn't maybe get out as quick as uh, Sean would have liked him. But I think the winner would have won anyway. The winner won well. Lovely for Rachel. She's after getting a couple of absolute pearlers in the last five or six weeks. Absolutely. And one half of this filly. Uh, yeah, one, yeah, one half this filly and got a desperate fall at the chair in Cheltenham or in Liverpool. Uh, she's a hardy bit of stuff. She was leading lady... Uh, conditional rider last year and uh, she's right up there with the very best she's a smashing a smashing little rider she gets the really horses run for her and she's strong and she's got a great head and she's got great determination but I just said she got a few absolutely it, horrible it, it, falls it's interesting to watch in this shot you yeah. said uh, man woman whatever there's two women in this shot and two men and this is a right hand the track and both the girls that are sticking their left hand which you should have it in neither of the guys do let's hear from Sally Ann yeah, just made it in time to catch Rachel Blackmore before she heads in. Rachel, that seemed like the most perfect run you could have imagined going around there. 
Um, yeah, brilliant. Uh, look, to get on a horse for Willie Mullins at a festival, um, you know, a- any of them have a chance. So delighted now. Uh, she's he, she's owned by a very nice man in Neville Eager and a few of his pals. So it's brilliant for them and uh, delighted. She seemed to really pick up when you asked her for the effort and just got a dream run around the outside, didn't she? Yeah, I, I, I was good and wide the whole way, but I thought just giving her a bit of light, uh, she's not over big, would help her. And oh, look, I probably kicked on too soon and everything, but it worked out well, so it's great. When you win, it's always a perfect ride and a nice start to Punch Down Festival for you as well. Yeah, like this is a fantastic festival. It's great to be part of it and um, just re- really grateful to, to get the opportunities. Well done, Rachel. So I've got Neville Eager here, one of the owners from the Three Mile House Syndicate, and a very excited man indeed. And why wouldn't you be? What a performance! What a winner! I couldn't believe it. This is what dreams is all about. You don't believe what this meant. Have it here at the Punchstown Festival as well, Neville. Tracy, our local track, I'm only 15 miles from here, and I tell you one thing, it's unbelievable. I can't believe it. And who have we got beside you here? Not, not... You one of the owners, just unbelievable. How <laughs> many, how many are there? Like, like, you turn around, the three of you. Brody, where are you? Where's Brody? <laughs> As you can see, there's, there's great excitement here, but a word from Rachel Blackmore, because didn't she ride a fantastic race? I, I sponsor Brian Hayes, he's a very good friend down through the years, I've met him in the Shark Highlands, a really good friend, and... and his girlfriend is Rachel, and I couldn't believe it. We kept it in the family. She's a super rider. A lovely, lovely girl. Needless to say, there's going to be some great celebrations. You know how to celebrate. <laughs> I'd say you do, lads. Well done. Well done. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, lovely words and lovely smiles as well. Ruby riding into a winner's enclosure of Punchestown is a special thing. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, look, it's my local festival, so I've always loved it, but it is great to ride a winner here. And local connections, and they get a great kick out of it. And it's like any festival now, but it's great to start on a high, get a winner on the board, and, uh, and look forward to the rest of the week. Is she a great little pilot, though, for light weight for only a couple of years at it? Like, it's funny, I was working for ITV last week, and they didn't show the replay of the of the chair and the fall she got, but um, watching it in, in the recordings, the, the impact of which she hit the ground, the force in which she was fired into the ground off Alpha de Zobo, and how she got up and walked away was... Uh, she two rotten falls at Ferry House after that, yeah? yeah. She two rotten yeah. falls at Ferry yeah. as well. Yeah. She's a and she'd be into Eddie's right now. She's always laughing and smiling and works as hard as anybody. And, you know, she's, she's able to hold her corner. 4.30 in the difference, as you see now. Gordon leading Willie. Early days. Brian. Oh, yes. Rachel Blackmore steers... Number 24 in your paper, True Self, your 12 to 1 winner of the Kelly Sheep. Ruby, of course, reference Alpha de Zobo. Well, Rachel will be teaming up with Alpha de Zobo tomorrow in our big one, the Coral Punchestown Gold Cup. It's a race you'll see live on RT at half past five tomorrow evening. And uh, Rachel, what a credit she is to the game. She writes True Self to win at 12 to 1. Second, Joey Sasa for Noel Mead. Uh, at 14 to 1. Third number 20, Light That at 25 to 1. And fourth number 17, Low Sun at 9 to 1. Four absentees, 16, 26, 27, and 28. Your beaten favourite was Bally O'Sheen, sent off at 8 to 1. A favourite. It's been some meeting so far. We've only just started, and we have the big one next the Bike Sports Champion Chase. We're in the parade ring here. Now, people are about eight or ten deep, and they haven't come to back this horse. They've just come to admire him. And there he is, Sprinter Sakura, ten to one on favourite, bidding to make it ten from ten over fences. He's done it at Cheltenham, he's done it at Aintree, and he's doing it at Pontchastown in all its glory. Just a crowd. The amount of people that were here for one horse was massive. The parade was 20 deep and those cheers. The place was electric. This is the horse we came to see. He didn't disappoint. 